Let's go, Johnny! Before the internet's omnipresence, Telugu stars were a little more important to their fans than other actors were to the fans within their cultures. Telugu stars weren't just people performing roles. They were also representatives of a form of idealism that the youth could cherish. One could argue that other cinema cultures share a similar frenzy for its actors, but other dominant cultures also produced high achieving but equally popular figures in other aspects of life. They had sports persons, musicians and artists between whom the collective consciousness could split its idolatry. The obvious exclusions are politicians because viewing any politicians through the lens of idealism would make them appear contorted. Being culturally landlocked with minimal influence from the outside in the 90s and a little after meant that the Telugu states had only one set of public figures who were loved en masse and who would, at least hypothetically, provide a guiding light on how to conduct oneself in public life. The Film Stars how should we speak? What kind of music do we listen to? How brash must we be? How must we compose ourselves? And most importantly, who are we? These questions particularly haunt young men who with eagerness to express themselves often echo the loudest or the most confident voice. That's when Pawan Kalyan, the actor and star came as an answer by expressing himself with an ease and carefreeness that the generation was craving. <laughs> The previous generation had lost their idealism to the now dead left and the subsequent generation was looking for new heroes. Except they didn't want someone who lived life like they were tasked with the burden of reforming society. They just wanted someone who wears their heart on their sleeve, someone who led a life where they eagerly anticipated playing cricket at the end of each week, or someone who gets yelled at by their dad and just laughs it off. Someone to remind them that life isn't all that serious but it's fun and worth living. And when Pawan Kalyan gets scolded by his father in Tamudu, when his friends make fun of him for pining for a girl above his league in Toli Prema, when he gets rejected by a girl in Suswagatam, or when he just smokes vengefully to irritate a girl he loves in Kushi, it all felt like the perfect mix of representation and aspiration. He was goofy, likeable, heroic, and most importantly, worth looking up to. As an actor, he also ensured that he imported genres like blues and pop into his films while mixing them with folk and classic film music. It was a perfect mix of, hey, here's what we are and here's what we can be. You can listen to Ricky Martin and be from a small town. You can be goofy and still be a hero. Life didn't necessarily have to have a noble purpose. You can dance badly even if everyone's watching because who cares? Wear what you want, sport a messy hairstyle, lather it in brill cream, sing an English song badly. If the previous generation was burdened by the lofty ideals of the left, the generation that followed was unchained by a film star who was just being himself. Nowhere is the liberation and cultural amalgamation he stood for more apparent than in the film Kushi, where he plays a Bengali man singing Raj Kapoor songs, practicing Japanese martial arts and emulating Michael Jackson's dance while fanboying Chiranjeevi. I like him. When Chiranjeevi, I into Manokura Baga. But this cultural party, which began to find shape in 1998, came to a rude halt in 2003 in the form of an experimental film called Johnny. <laughs> which Pawan Kalyan wrote, directed and acted in. He pushed the envelope a bit too far and it wasn't just everyone's glass of tea and the film flopped big time. Johnny tells the story of a mixed martial arts fighter who needs to win fights to earn money and pay for his wife's cancer treatment. The film has shades of Ram Gopal Verma's rawness and it also shares his obsession with Mumbai. But Pawan Kalyan himself overindulged. There are references to the Muhammad Ali vs Norton boxing fights, rising Hindutva, Mumbai's underworld and countless other details that were lost on the audience and the flaws were accentuated by the humorlessness of the film. Partly because it's melodramatic and mostly because the dialogues are inaudible. Owing to Pawan Kalyan experimenting with sync sound technique while recording dialogues, Johnny tanked at the box office. One could speculate that had RGV himself handled the film, it might have gotten the cinematic direction and shape that the wildness of Pawan Kalyan's energy and thoughts needed. Whatever the reasons were, Johnny killed the momentum of the star and his followers. And more importantly, it stopped Pawan Kalyan from ever being vulnerable again on screen. 
he poured his heart into the film and the audience rejected his love letter to them had he watched his previous films he might have learned to laugh at the failure and come back with a smile but sadly he never recovered he lost that freedom within himself and it reflected in his body of work a string of mediocre films with none of his original ease even a decade later when he finally got a few blockbusters it never recreated the same euphoria it just showed glimpses of what existed at one point of time and now even as pavan kalyan re-enters the telugu consciousness as a politician of the future it feels like an awkward fit the freedom he once represented doesn't sit with the nobleness of his purpose or the corruptness of his new profession as a politician so a generation that briefly found freedom was suddenly reminded that parties get over and the drudgery of life takes over freedom was a fleeting mirage of youth if the previous generation had been led down by an ideology the next generation of men were reminded that the exuberance of youth is illusory life will move on we have to do jobs where employers expect machine level labor emis grow and hairlines recede and ultimately one must dance cautiously because society is watching us at all times if only johnny was a blockbuster or even a half decent film the cultural party might have lasted a little longer the youth's vitality could have been extended and we could have all danced freely for just a few more seconds but it wasn't to be dad z left the actor his young fans and the culture as a whole but those who heard the music in their minds and danced with freedom for those few fleeting years could afford a smile while listening to the tune of mera juta hai japani mera juta hai japani ye patlu hindustani sar pe lal to pirusi reciting the names of prominent bengalis and swishing an imaginary katana before a sudden internet ping swallows them back into their daily grind Hey everyone thank you for watching this video now let's talk about FC Gold FC Gold is Film Companion's recognition of excellence in storytelling our team of critics sift through the month's releases and nominate films and artists who they believe deserve recognition so here's who won FC Gold 2024 in April Prithviraj Sukumaran for his performance in Aadhi Jeevitam The Goat Life Diljit Dosanj for his performance in Amar Singh Chamkeela Aarti Bajaj for editing Amar Singh Chamkeela and Fahad Fasal for his performance in Avesha It's an absolute delight to be witnessing great cinema this year I hope you're watching these films too Follow Film Companion for your film fix film recommendations and more